Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson spent 10 years married as the royal family's odd couple. While things didn't work out the first time, they may be gearing up to give their marriage another shot. Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson were married from 1986 to 1996. Though they're said to have known each other as children, they didn't become romantically involved until being reacquainted at the 1985 Royal Ascot. At the time of their marriage, Prince Andrew enjoyed a career in the British Navy. Owing in part to his royal duties, Andrew ended up spending very little time with his wife. In fact, Sarah Ferguson later admitted to Harper's Bazaar that the two only spent 40 days together each year in the first five years of their marriage, a reality that she said was difficult for her to process and accept. Sarah also told the publication that when she and Andrew married, she had only one request that he was never able to fulfill. As she explained, I married my boy, who happened to be a prince and a sailor, because I loved him, and still do. My only condition being, I have to be with you. Only two weeks after the wedding, however, the royal family sent Andrew back out to sea. While neither Andrew nor Sarah have commented in great detail about the circumstances that led to their separation and divorce, others have inferred that the many weeks and months they spent apart led Sarah to grow bored with the relationship. The year the two legally split up, royal author Sarah Bradford wrote that Sarah Ferguson had often been put off by the way Andrew conducted himself when they were together, with the writer asserting that she found his behavior, quote, "...embarrassingly boorish." Prince Andrew's constant absence did more than just strain his relationship with his new wife. It also led him to miss much of Sarah's first pregnancy with Princess Beatrice. Sarah later said that the royal family she had married into was less than understanding when she got upset about her husband spending so much time away. Speaking to Harper's Bazaar in 2018, she explained that after Beatrice's birth, Andrew got 10 days of shore leave, and when he left and I cried, they all said, grow up and get a grip. Sarah, however, went on to encourage other royal brides to stick by their husbands through thick and thin, despite the unusual difficulties that royal life presents. As she put it, stay with your man, don't let him be taken from you. When you married a man, you fell in love and you married the man, and then you've got to come to terms with a fairy tale. Now, it's not a fairy tale, it's real life in there, well, so to speak. While it's impossible to know what their marriage might have been like if Andrew had been home more, especially during Sarah's pregnancy with Beatrice, it certainly seems that Sarah herself believes it could have ended very differently. Things between Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson officially began to sour in 1992 when the pair announced their separation. That August, Sarah had been photographed on vacation with a man named John Bryan. Up to that point, Sarah had insisted that Bryan was little more than a financial advisor to the Duchess of York, but photographs captured by the paparazzi revealed that the two enjoyed quite an intimate relationship. In the photos, Bryan is seen kissing Sarah's toes. Sarah found herself in the humiliating position of being at the royal residence of Balmoral along with the rest of the royal family as the story broke. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were reportedly mortified by the news. The Daily Mail later wrote that Philip, in particular, did not want to even be in the same room as Sarah and insisted she brought shame to the entire family. Rumors of animosity between Sarah and Philip persisted for years. In April 1996, the Chicago Tribune reported that their divorce was expected to be finalized the following month. Sarah would be allowed to use her Duchess of York title, but was stripped of all other royal affiliations. The pair's lawyer explained that both parties could continue to be responsible for their children, then ages 7 and 6, writing in a formal statement, "...the children will continue to live with the Duchess, and both parents will participate fully in their upbringing." Even though she had her complaints about her marriage, especially regarding her husband's extensive time away from home, Sarah Ferguson has admitted she felt forced into agreeing to divorce Prince Andrew in 1996. The dissolution of the marriage, she said, largely revolved around practical matters rather than irreconcilable differences between herself and Andrew. For starters, Sarah was interested in pursuing employment, which was something she couldn't do as a member of the royal family. 
As she told Harper's Bazaar, though she and Andrew were separated, it didn't have to mean divorce was inevitable. Yet Sarah's yearning to work outside the family was something royals are not allowed to do. She explained, I wanted to work. It's not right for a princess of the royal house to be commercial, so Andrew and I decided to make the divorce official so I could go off and get a job. Sarah also shared with the magazine that when it was time to strike a divorce settlement with Queen Elizabeth, she surprised the monarch by telling her that she only wanted friendship with the queen and nothing else. She said she knew doing so would require her to work, but that she was playing a longer game. Adding, I wanted to be able to say, Her Majesty is my friend, not fight her, nor have lawyers saying, Look, she is greedy. I left my marriage knowing I'd have to work. I have. In the years that have elapsed between the time Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson divorced, rumors surfaced that one or both parties are interested in remarrying one another. Friends of the couple told Vanity Fair that the pair lived together in 2020 as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and that things between the two seem as good or even better than they ever have before. One source said, It has rekindled something and I can see a second wedding happening if it all goes Andrew's way. One factor that may play into their future is Andrew's legal entanglement regarding some salacious accusations. The prince has been accused of participating in sexual activities with a minor trafficked for sex by his late friend, disgraced American financier Jeffrey Epstein, an accusation he has categorically denied. Sarah has previously spoken up for Andrew amid the accusations. Knowing him as I know him, and he's one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life, and my best friend, and great father to my children. For her part, Sarah has admitted that she and Andrew are both still in love with one another. She told the Daily Mail, We both say it, we are completely compatible. Our bywords are communication, compromise, and compassion. Sarah also added that her wedding day was the happiest day of her life. Oh, it's the best day of my life, apart from having my girls. But when asked if she would remarry Andrew, Sarah played coy, insisting the two are content with the life they have together now. As she explained to the Daily Mail, We enjoy each other's company. We allow each other to blossom. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, but that's the way we are. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.